So this video is to demonstrate how we would safely make up an IV administration. First of all, we're going to look at how we would make up a bolus administration and then afterwards we'll look at how we would go about making up an infusion for administration. Okay, so, so then what, do we, uh, what are the first steps in the process? What do we need to do first? Okay, so the first things are we need to make sure that the patient understands what it is we're wanting to do for them. Um, so we need to think about consent and having a, a chat with them. Uh, secondly, we need to then think about, well, are they prescribed that medication? So we need to look at their drug okay. card decks and make sure that that's all uh, sorted and okay. it's, it's clear what it is that has been prescribed. We also then need to think about where we're going to be making up our IV meds. So um, there should be an identified area in the treatment room, a worktop area, that's clean, clear, clutter-free and not near a sink. Um, and that's where we would actually go to make up our medicines. Okay, um, and how do I how do I know if I need to give it as a bolus or whether I need to give it as an infusion? Where would where would I get that information? So once we know what medicine it is that's prescribed in the medicine card decks, we can then look at the IV monographs. Um, so most clinical areas have a folder um, that then give us all the information that we would need to know whether we need to bolus or, or to give it as an infusion safely uh, for the patient. These monographs are also available online, oh, okay. so you can look, they're oh, easy to cool. access for, yeah. for staff. Um, so that's where we would get that information. Okay, and um, who do I need to check the IV drugs with? Okay, so preferably it should be a registered nurse who has okay. done this um, IV study day before okay. and is competent in administering IVs, um, but that's not always possible. Okay. So it, preferably then another registered nurse, okay. but somebody who has, um, understands the calculations involved and feels competent to be able to do that double check. Um, but sometimes that's not always possible. Okay. So think about the multidisciplinary team. Think about who is working in the clinical area. It might be somebody like a medic or somebody like a pharmacist. They could also oh, okay. do those checks with you. Okay, that makes sense. Thank you. Okay, Lynn, so we're now ready to uh, prepare our IV medicine. What is the, the, the first thing that we need to do? Okay, so the first thing we need to do is wash our hands okay. uh, and decontaminate our hands and then we need to put our PPE on and get together all our equipment that I've got together on our tray here with our sharp spin. Okay, and um, what sort of PPE do we need? So PPE for this is our purple aprons and our nitrile gloves. Okay, and why do we wear a purple apron as opposed to just wearing our ordinary white aprons? So the purple apron is to signify that we're dealing with medicines. Okay. Uh, and that's to meant to remind everybody that we're dealing with medicines ah. and we don't want to be interrupted. Okay. Um, if we're interrupted when we're maybe doing an important part of mm -hmm. maybe a calculation, mm -hmm. it can break our train of thought and that's when errors are more likely to happen. Okay. Okay. We're actually not going to wear our aprons in this video um, because of the wrinkling okay, uh, and that wrinkles. affects the, the quality of the video sound. So we're not going to do that, but we will wear our gloves. Okay. And do we need to always wear gloves? Absolutely. The gloves are there to protect us. Um, if we're dealing with the same drugs day in and day out, if we then get splashes of that drug on our skin, that can then increase the risk of us then getting a, a, a reaction to that medicine. Um, that would be a problem then if we were ever to need that medicine, if we were a patient ourselves. So yes, we always wear gloves when we're dealing okay. with medicines. Okay. Okay, so now we've got my nice clean tray and okay. I've gathered all my equipment here. We need to now go ahead and make up our drug. So the first thing I'm going to do is get a Clonel wipe and clean off the top of the, the vials for my flush, my diluent and my medicine. Okay. 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 Um, so just open that up and these cloths are big enough that we have got space to sort of get a clean part of the cloth and then just clean the neck. So we've okay. checked all these before. Okay. Okay, so all of these get cleaned for sort of 15 to 30 seconds. Okay. And do we always use a Clinel wipe? Absolutely. The clarhexidine in the Clinel okay. wipe um, kills off more bacteria, ah, so it gives a better disinfection. Okay. okay, so we use them instead of the, uh, the just the plain alcohol wipes. Yeah. Okay. And the other thing is to make sure that we are then uh, cleaning off the, the necks of all the ampules okay. that we're using. Um, because although they maybe seem clean, we can't see the bacteria yeah. that are perhaps on them. Um, we've taken them out of cupboard, other people could have handled them without okay. you know, cleaning them. So um, it just makes sure that we're, we're being as clean as we possibly can be. Okay. okay. And then obviously the top of our medicine vial as well. Okay. And we do that for 30 seconds? Absolutely. Okay. 
Okay, so even if this medicine vial has had like a wee metal shield in okay. the top to protect it during transit, once that's broken off or pulled back, just to clean the top of the rubber okay. as well and round the, the, the neck of any glass ampules that we're using. Okay. Okay. And once we've got done all that, just make sure that we've put them in a place where we're not then going to touch them okay. again so that they're then free from contamination okay. and that just goes in the clinical and waste. In the clinical waste. Okay. okay. Next thing I'm going to do is just open up my needle and syringe for my flush. Okay, and I see you're peeling them open. Is that always the way we're meant to open the syringes? Yeah, yeah. it's quite tempting to yeah. sort of burst I've, through. I've before, yeah, yeah um, but it's important when we're thinking about this aseptic non-touch technique, uh -huh. the ANTT, that we're protecting the key parts. So the key parts for this are then the tip of the syringe uh -huh. and the hub of the needle. Okay. So what I've got is my, I've just peeled it open. All okay. these packets come ready to peel open. And I'm keeping it in its sterile packet so that I can then just peel open my needle okay. and hold it nice and firmly and then just go sterile to sterile. Right. So and then no, that just, nobody's touching it? Nobody's touching it. It's absolutely free mm -hmm. from contamination, okay? Uh, I can get rid of that into my bin. I'm going to keep a hold of this okay. packet at the moment and you'll see why in a wee second, okay? So to get my, my flush drawn up, I need to pull the shield down and out the road, okay? And then get my uh, flush here that okay. we've already checked, okay. okay? And then the last thing I'm going to do is just take off the wee needle guard in with my needle and then just pull back on the, the, the flush volume that you want. So okay. you'll also see that I'm using a 10 ml syringe yeah, for this. That, yeah. Do you, okay. never, do you never use a 5 ml or a, or a 2 ml? Or? Well, you'll see I've only got 5 ml of flush here. Um, and the reason for that is that um, the pressure that you can put on a, a cannula, if you use a small syringe, uh -huh. could be quite significant. Uh -huh, I see. Okay. So it's to prevent any sort of issues with okay. that. Okay. So once I've got it all drawn up, I don't need my needle anymore. So on a hard surface, uh -huh. I can Just activate, activate, activate safety, that safety, safety, safety device. device. Now, I've got a choice here. I want to protect the tip of my mm -hmm. syringe with my flush to go to my patient. So I could keep the needle attached, mm -hmm. but if I'm not taking a sharp spin to the patient, what I could, the other way I could do it is also take my sharp off and put it in the, ah. the sharp spin. But my packet that I ah. kept, I can then keep put that back in to then get the, the keep the tip yeah, of the syringe it's nice and it. clean. It's, okay. it's protecting it from any contamination. Okay? Okay. So I need to repeat that really. Okay. And um, that's my flush. The thing I need to now do is repeat that for my medicine. So peel okay. open the packets. This time I'm using a hypodermic needle, but I could consider using a, a filter needle. Ah, I've seen a them blunt before. filter yeah. needle. Um, I'm you choosing to use a blue hypodermic needle um, so that there's less chance of me drawing up particles of rubber uh -huh. or glass if I was using a glass yeah. ampule. I could maybe use a green hypodermic mm -hmm. needle, um, but I don't want to use a, a white needle. It's okay. just too big yeah. and it's more risk of getting a particulate okay. drawn up into my medicine. That's what the blunt filter needles mm -hmm. are for. So for things that are really thick and sticky mm -hmm. um, that I can then use a blunt filter needle to draw up and then change it, it to, to a hypodermic, hypodermic needle. Okay. okay, But I'm not going to use that okay. in this instance. I still kept that all okay. nice and sterile in there. It's not touched anything. So sterile to sterile okay. and then just sort of connect it on. Okay. okay. Again, I'll keep my wee packet for that and I can get rid of that into my, my clinical waste. Next thing I'm going to do is just pull the, the needle guard down and out the road and I want to draw up my uh, diluent for making up my, my medicine here. So needle off and we've already checked all this earlier in the process. But now my IV monograph for my drug here said that I wanted 3 ml of fluid. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. So what happens if you drop too much? Well, uh, I have drawn up too much here, so let me get rid of the air bubbles okay, first. Okay, because that's okay. important, yeah. Um, so you might see people yeah. flicking. Yeah. Um, that's, it just all that does is break up the air bubbles. Mm -hmm. um, best way to get rid of them is to create a bit of space in the air, mm -hmm. the syringe at the top, hold it firmly, uh -huh. and then just clap your hands together. Okay, okay. And okay. I can see it there. And it's, it pulls yeah. all the air bubbles off the edges of the, the syringe, okay? okay? And then once you've got that drawn up, you can see I've got five mLs yeah, here, which is too that. much. Yeah. So it's not good practice to spray it into the tree because okay. then there's liquid. Um, it's not good practice to maybe use the sink or the sharp spin okay. to get rid of it. The best thing to do to get rid of this excess is to put it back oh, into back the, in the bio. sterile cont container. And again, that's all to do with reducing the risk of contamination of the tip of my mm -hmm. needle. I can okay? see that, yeah. So I've now got three mLs with yep. no air bubble yeah. and I've not touched anything. Okay. So you don't need to change your needle? Don't need to change okay. my needle. One needle's like, absolutely okay. fine for this. Okay. Next thing I'm going to do is just hold my ampule firmly mm -hmm. of my medicine, 
put my needle in and then just what I'm going to do is just gradually okay. add the medicine to the, the vial here just a little bit of time and just release any pressure yeah. and that just allows the air to come back ah, up into the okay. syringe okay. okay you can do that now obviously it's a small volume here yeah I've been able to get all my liquid in yeah. Um, but what that would do is allow any pressure in here to then let the air into the syringe. I see, I see. I see. Okay. So now we need to just mix it. So um, I can see that you are mixing it, but do you do you shake it? Do you do you sometimes roll it? Sometimes I see you know, people doing different things in, yeah. in, in, in well, the clinical area. What I'm doing is just holding it together uh -huh. in one hand, and yeah. that's reducing the risk of my hands coming apart, uh -huh. and then we're getting a needle stick uh -huh. injury. Yeah. Okay. But yes, I'm just mixing it back and forward. Okay. You don't need to be too vigorous. Okay. Um, but some drugs that will tell you in the monograph that um, you need to swirl it. Oh, okay. And that's just because those drugs can be really difficult ah. to get from a powder to a liquid. Yep. Okay. So do what the monograph tells okay. you to do. But this one just says it mix. So yep. back and forward just until gently. it's just gently yep. um, all uh, completely dissolved. Okay. One thing you don't want to do is leave any powder yep. because that could have an accumulative effect yep. um, if you left some powder behind it yep. every time you were then giving that patient uh -huh. a medication. They weren't getting that full dose. They were getting slightly yep. less than you planned. Okay. okay. Once it's fully dissolved, what I want to then do is just pull this medication uh, up into back into the syringe. Okay. So you can do that by swapping the air that's in the yep. syringe, kind of idea, or just by drawing it back. It depends okay. on the volume that you've got. Okay, now that's mm. the, my vial's nice and empty. Yeah, I can see so it's all, all positive pressure in the plunger, <laughs> sucking it all in, and there's no drips anywhere. Yeah. Okay. Next thing I want to then do is to get rid of some of the, the air in my syringe uh -huh. here. If there was any air bubbles, I could do the same as what I did before. So just hold it firmly, bit of mm -hmm. air at the top, and then clap that my class. hands together. Okay. Pull down before I push up, okay. just to get rid of any air, air and air bubbles. Yeah, I can see all the airs. Airs right air out. Yeah. Okay. And that's me ready to go with my bolus administration. So now to get it to the patient, I need to activate my safety okay. device. Okay. On a hard surface. Okay. Shouldn't use your thumb. Yeah. Okay. The reason for that is that you could slip and miss mm -hmm. and then get a needle yeah. stick injury yeah. on the tip of the needle. Two ways again to do this. I could um, keep my needle attached. Mm -hmm. Then I also know which one's my flush and which one's yeah. my medicine. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, and the the um, I've also got my packet here. So if I wanted to maybe take my needle off and put it in my sharps bin here, I could then protect yeah. the tip of the syringe using the needle. Yeah. And, and that, that just makes sure to... that just makes sure that you're doing a non-touch technique. Absolutely, yeah. it's just yeah. those key parts are all protected yeah. and covered yeah. at all times. Yeah, okay. Okay, Lynn, so I've seen that you have prepared an IV bolus. Um, what would be different if we were to pay, prepare an IV infusion? Okay, there's just a few things okay. that are different. Um, and I've got these things okay. here. So in my tray, I have my bag of okay. infusion fluid. I've got my Clonel wipe, okay. and I essentially have still got my IV flush from that I've pre prepared the exact same way as I did okay. earlier on okay. for the bolus, and I've also got my medicine that I've reconstituted exactly the same okay. way as doing my medicine. Okay. What I would now do differently okay. is that at the time I was decontaminating the tops of the medicine vials, uh -huh. I would also open up my bag here, so we've checked the expiry dates, but open up my bag here and that can just go in the clinical waste. And the injection port here, what I'm going to do with my oh, Clonel wipe mm -hmm. is just open that up and at the same time as I was de decontaminating my medicine mm -hmm. vials, I would also decontaminate my injection port ah, here. Okay. And again, it's just in case it's ever the packaging, outside okay. packaging's been damaged okay. or opened and it means that we're then you know, yeah. decontaminating that as and well. And would you do that for 30 seconds, the same length exactly of time the same, as before? Exactly okay. the same length of time as before. Okay. Okay. okay, so once I've finished with my Clonel wipe, okay. that can just go in the clinical okay. waste. Okay. What I'm now going to do is, now that I've got my medicine and it's all been prepared as uh -huh. exactly the same way as I said that we were doing our bolus, what I'm going to do is just take my needle guard off, okay. holding it just gently on a flat surface, uh -huh. and you'll see that there's a hard plastic part yep. here, so that's just to give it a bit of rigidity and to stop okay. it moving. Just into the injection port in the middle here is just gently ah, add the needle in, okay. okay? And is it best to go into the centre of it? Yes, okay. absolutely. If you go off centre, uh -huh. it can actually cause the needle ah, to bend. Okay. okay. So just take your time and then once your needle's in, just gently inject the, the medicine that you've prepared okay. um, into that. 
Your needle can now okay. withdraw and then just in a hard surface activate that sharps, that, okay. that needle. And then we're finished with that. So that can all just go in the sharps bin. Okay. 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 What we've now got is our infusion bag ready to go to the patient. But this part of the bag has got more concentration yeah. of that medicine in it than the rest. So just using the air bubble at the top here, what we can do is just mix it. Okay. So don't be too vigorous uh -huh. because that can then just create lots of air bubbles okay. in it, which can be a problem later once we've spiked the bag and hung it up, I connected it to the patient. But that just then makes sure that that medicine is evenly distributed ah. throughout the bag. Okay. Okay. This is now very difficult to see that it's got medication in it. Uh -huh. So we've got our label that we prepared and we've written all the patient's okay. details in it. That now then just goes on the back, ah, okay? So that just peels off. There's no then, because we've already written it up, yeah. there's no delays then in getting it mixed up or, or forgetting what medication it is we've prepared. Okay. So that goes in the back so that you can still see clearly uh, the medicine, the, the, the details of the bag that you've put it in. Okay, and I see that saline. Do we always use saline or do we use dextrose sometimes? Um, it depends very okay. much on the medicine and on the patient's clinical condition. Okay. Um, you can use either in okay. some instances, but that would be in the IV monograph as to which, if there was a particular one that you would use over the other. Okay, but that then means that it's very clearly identifiable um, that that's what it is that's in the bag and that's what we've added to the ah, bag. I see, that makes sense. Okay. So now I've got a fresh Clonel okay. wipe, okay? Um, so another Clorhexidine wipe. And this time it's to decontaminate the end of the needle free access device. Okay. That whole thing about um, the ANTT. Mm -hmm. So we need to decontaminate this right. end. So getting that, the, the Clinel wipe and giving it a really good clean ah. for 30 seconds. Okay. okay. Um, and I've heard people saying that scrub the hub before. Is that, is that the right really, term? It's a really good yeah. catchphrase to remind me that this is what I need to yeah. do. Scrub yeah. the hub. Yeah. Um, and the reason that we're doing that is because we can't use the top port ah. of the PVC because we can't clean it. Okay. okay. And all our PVCs should have this extension on and they should stay on the patient. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Um, so yes, that's to, to give us easy access. Okay. So it might have one or two lumens, but whatever lumen it is you're cleaning, you're cleaning the end okay. of it for okay. that 30 seconds. Okay. And that then just can go in my clinical waste bin, which is down there. Once the alcohol, the alcohol then needs to evaporate. Okay. Okay. That takes about 30 seconds. So all of this time I'm reassuring my patient uh -huh. that this is what I'm going to do. And the next thing I'm going to do is get my flush. Okay. okay? I know this is my flush because I put it into my wee paper right. packet. Okay. Okay. So just connect that on. Okay. And you're connecting it in such a way that you're not touching it? Absolutely. So it's using that non-touch technique? Non-touch technique, just making sure that the tip of the syringe yeah. and the, the end of the needle-free access device, those are the key parts yeah, in this that we're part we're protecting. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. So my flush now needs to be given, um, and to do that we need to give it as a push-pause technique. Okay. So on the end of my plunger here, just push, push, mm -hmm. push, and you can see that's going in yeah. really easily, yeah. okay? And what that does is it just clears any medication or any okay. it's, uh, sort of things okay. out here and it makes sure that my needle is okay. clearly in the vein, okay. okay? And what do you do if you feel any resistance when you're, when you're administering the flush? So what that would maybe indicate is that the needle isn't, uh, the cannula isn't in the vein properly, ah, so okay. you would need to get some okay. advice about okay, that. Okay, so it should go in easily. It should go in okay. very easily, okay? Um, and I'm keeping some of that flush because I'll need the rest of it at the end of the medication. Okay. So the flush is to begin um, at the beginning to make sure that the PVC is in the, in the vein. Okay. And then we need to give the medication, which is what I'm going to do now. So I know this is my medication because I left my needle attached to this. So just taking my needle off and that can then just go in my sharps bin. And again, just making sure yeah. that those key parts are protected. are protected and not contaminated in anything. And now what I need to do is just, again, thinking about how long, just give that in little increments. Okay. okay. And how long does it take to give a bolus? It depends on the medicine. Okay. Sometimes you can give a bolus as a stat, okay. so you can just push it in. Okay. Uh, sometimes it will tell you in the IV monograph ah. um, how long it's a duration okay. of administration, mm -hmm. and that might be something like three, five, six okay. minutes, something like that. So you just need to decide how much volume you've got okay. and what period of time you okay. need to do it and just judge it gently. And what can happen if we give it too quickly? Well, that can cause side effects ah, for the okay. patient. Okay. So as well as lo doing a local check here that this medication isn't causing any problems uh -huh. or any pain uh -huh. um, or any sort of infiltration uh -huh. of the site, 
right here, I'm also checking my patient and mm. making sure that they're okay, okay and yeah. they're feeling well yeah. and they're not feeling ill, which okay. could maybe indicate that I had was giving this too quickly. Okay. okay. And again, that should go in nice and easily with nice no, and no, easily, no, no resistance. resistance. Okay. okay, so I've just given that a little increment parts. Once that's all then fully finished, I then need to clear the line again with the, this medication with the rest of my flush. Okay. So again, connecting on my mm -hmm. syringe and then just that. Now, the first part of this needs to be given at the same rate mm -hmm. as we've given our medication okay. because this is all full of that medication yeah, yeah. we've just given as a bolus. So just slowly to begin with. And then once I feel now, so this whole part here is less than a mil of fluid mm -hmm. to, to prime it. Um, so I've now given about a mil of that fluid at the same rate mm -hmm. as my, my bolus. I can now get a bit more bigger bits okay. to then make sure that I'm using that push okay. pause technique yeah. to then clean the inside yeah. of, that, of that cannula and make sure okay. there's no residue left. Okay. Keeping a positive pressure in the plunger, just clamp it off. Okay, so and what does that clamp do? The clamp just means that nothing's going to come ah. back flow. Okay. 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 And so then I can important. just disconnect and then my syringes just go in my clinical waste with my tray. Okay. Okay. The next thing we need to then do is record that we've given ah, that okay. in the drug cardex. Okay, so on my drug cardex here, you and I both need to sign to say that that's been administered. Ah. Okay. So it's two signatures. Two signatures okay. in the drug cardex. And we also then need to take off our, our blue gloves uh -huh. and do our hand hygiene again because we've been at a patient's space. Okay. okay, thank you. Okay, Lynn, so I've seen how we um, can administer an IV bolus. How is it different um, if we were to administer an IV infusion like you've got in your tree here? Okay, so I've got, we've got our infusion uh -huh. that we prepared in the treatment room uh -huh. and our medicine cardex, uh -huh. okay? I have done my hand hygiene and put fresh gloves uh -huh. on, okay? And we've done all our checks with the patient's name band and for allergies okay. and, and all the rest okay, of so it. Okay, so just the same way same as before? as before, okay. absolutely. So I've got my cardex there, I'll put it to the side. This is then about how we would connect it, okay? okay? Um, so the first thing that I need to show you is that when I was uh, connecting up my giving set, I've kept the end of it in the packet here, okay? okay to protect the tip of my ah, giving okay. set. Uh, the same way as we were protecting the tips of the syringes okay. and needles, um, I've kept the, the end of my, my giving set in its packet there to keep it nice and clean. Okay. okay. I've also got my flush that I've mm -hmm. prepared because there's well, we need to check that this PVC is in the vein properly. Um, so to connect up my infusion set to this, I need to decontaminate okay. the end of my needle-free access device. So my Clinel wipe. Okay. So scrub the hub again. Scrub essentially. the hub. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. So scrub the hub for my thirty seconds. Okay. So given that a really good clean, and taking off the the, the slide at side clamp there. So that's for your 30 seconds and you would allow that to dry before Absolutely. you connected your syringe. Okay. Okay. And with my flush, and I know okay. it's my flush because I put it into its yep. paper packet. Okay, and then just connect it on exactly the same, same way as we did before. And then administer it using that push-pause technique push that you pause. were talking about. So about half a mil, yeah. half a mil. Half a mil. Okay. Until you're happy, making sure that there is the, there's no resistance yeah. or, or anything okay. else. Just making sure then that my um, needle-free access uh -huh. device doesn't get contaminated yeah. in anything. Okay. okay. If you could then hold yes, my infusion line. And this okay. has already been been primed. It's pri we primed yeah. it in the treatment. Yeah. Room. What I now need to do is take the cap off the end of the line here, and again just straight on, and just connect it on, just twisting it on. Okay. okay, just making sure that there's no air bubbles or no anything. No air bubbles yeah. or anything else. And then that's good to go, As it, whether you're using a gravity set okay. or you would then set the rate up on a drip stand or whether you're then needing to set the pump. Ah, okay. okay. But that's how you would connect it up. Okay. And how fast would I give it? It depends, again, on the okay. medication and on the... You would get that information in the IV monographs. Okay. Okay, and you would just use that roller clamp up here if you were um, wanting to change the rate, if you were using the gravity Absolutely. set, Absolutely. Um, or you could put it through an infusion pump if that was appropriate for, for, for that drug. For that drug. It depends what duration of time you want to give it over and how quickly it needs to be given. Okay, um, and after this has been administered and it's been finished, um, do we disconnect and flush in the same way that we did when you administered the bolus? Absolutely. Yeah, so just Absolutely. exactly the same process. And then also decontaminate the end of the needle-free access device again with a canal wipe so there's no medicine residue on okay. it. Okay, 
Okay. And it's not sticky. Okay. And then obviously document it on your on your card decks exactly the same way with two exactly signatures. Exactly the same way with two signatures. All right. Okay. Thank you. Okay then, so in summary, my kinda, I feel as though my key learning points would be um, scrub the hub. Absolutely, just make sure it's for 30 seconds, think 30. And it would be with a chlorohexidine wipe, not uh, alcohol? Absolutely. Okay, um, and that would reduce the risk of uh, contamination and infection, is, is yeah, that right? Yeah, uh, that's why we use them. Um, the other thing uh, that I've really kind of um, taken away is the importance of minimising interruptions to reduce the risk of mistakes happening. Absolutely, and that's why we would normally have our purple aprons on. Yeah. Because uh, that's indicating that we're dealing with medicines. Okay, and... Um, in terms of checking drugs, um, it's always an independent second check. Yes, and remember that could be with a registered nurse that's done the IV medicines course, a registered nurse who's maybe competent oh, at doing okay. the calculations, okay. a doctor or a pharmacist okay. could also help, okay. depending on your clinical okay. situation. There's a range of people that I can, I can check yeah, it with. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, in terms of flushing, um, I know that it's important to flush. Um, at different stages throughout the process. Yep, you would need to flush before the, okay. devi uh, the device to make sure that it's patent before you give any medicine. Okay. In between any medicines to make sure that there's then no mixing of those medications and the, the, the needle-free access device right. or the PVC. Okay. And then at the end to make sure that there's no sticky medicine residue left in the, the needle-free access device or the cannula itself. Okay, uh, and one more thing really was was just to kind of highlight was the um, uh, you mentioned the importance of the monographs right the, the the whole process and that we must refer to them absolutely and remember you can get them as paper copy in the clinical areas in those folders okay. or they're also accessible on staff net as electronic copies okay, so there's, there's various ways we can get a access huge to them. amount of information on them I've just got, I've just got one more question um, and obviously this process we um, talked through and and you uh, demonstrated administering IV medicines via a P PVC. Um, quite a lot of patients in clinical areas um, have other vascular access devices in, like central lines or portacaths. Um, where would I get some information about how perhaps the, the process might be different? Okay, um, so all of that information about how you would, uh, any steps that would then be slightly different for if you were using like a central line, um, would be in the vascular access device guideline. That's also got its dedicated web page on StaffNet so that you can look at that. There's one page uh -huh. uh, templates that give you the step-by-step -step okay. procedure as to when you would wash your hands, put on your gloves, decontaminate, scrub the hub and yeah. do all these different key parts and how it might slightly be different. You might need to do more of those things okay. um, accessing those devices. But essentially it's the same aseptic non-touch okay. technique that we're using. So the principle's the same, the it's just a different exactly device the and there might be some variation. Absolutely. In, in, in the process. Okay. Thank you, Lynn.